Welcome to the last show, the 2015 edition of The Art of Physics. Although one of our guests has appeared on previous shows, we decided to close the season with a heavyweight. So we're going to talk to Albert Einstein and his friend, Niels Bohr. Um, okay, uh, Einstein appears to be delayed. Uh, so what's new? He's always delayed. Uh, and I can't even find Minin Improbable. Some days I like to change his name to just plain impossible. Um, oh well, uh, Niels Bohr is here, so let's talk to him. Hello, Dr. Bohr, and welcome to the Art of Physics show. Well, thanks, and please call me Niels. You know, some of us in the Scientist Protection Plan appreciate your efforts to keep us alive in the younger generation's consciousness. But isn't that a bit risky? You know, these minions... These minions are so inept. Uh, for crying out loud, I specifically told Min and Improbable to get Einstein here on time. And look where we are. The time is flitting. Our contract with those minions... Uh, oh, never mind. Here I am with one of the world's greatest physicists and a noted humanitarian to boot. Let's just talk to Niels Bohr. Oh, well, thanks. But you forgot my football exploits. Football? Yes. I was in goal for the Copenhagen Academic Football Club, and my brother Harold played in the 1908 Olympics. In goal? Uh, uh, oh, 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 yes. Uh, what Europeans call football, we in the States call soccer. You're Danish. Yeah. Harold was my younger brother, and we had an older sister, Jenny. <laughs> Sounds like a nice family. Oh, we had wonderful parents. Our father taught physiology at the University of Copenhagen, and our mother's family was prominent in banking and parliamentary circles. They were Jewish. So that made you Jewish, just like Einstein, who still isn't here. Yes, Einstein and I were both Jewish, but neither of us spent much time practicing Judaism. Oddly, we were both forcibly reminded of our Jewish roots by Adolf Hitler. Albert and I met in 1920 in Berlin, and later that year he came to visit me in Copenhagen. We had so much in common. Max Planck, who devised the quantum of energy of, in 1900 on purely mathematical grounds, while Albert and I took the quantum as a feature of reality. The quantum was a bit strange, but real nonetheless. And in 1921 and 1922, we both won Nobel Prizes for our quantum work. Wow, that's back-to-back -back Nobel Prizes for you and Albert Einstein. That's wonderful. So that was the beginning of quantum mechanics then. Indeed it was, and it started a lifelong debate between Albert and me. More of an extended discussion, I would suppose. Some debates feature animosity, but Albert and I have mutual respect for one another. Well, then, what's the substance of this debate or extended discussion, whatever? What were you talking about? Well, the mathematical formulation of quantum mechanics eventually involves something called the wave function. My interpretation of the wave function for a particle was that it represented the probability of finding that particle at a particular location in space and time. Wait, wait, what? Probability? <laughs> That's exactly what stuck in Albert's craw. Since he isn't here yet, uh. I'll oversimplify his position, and he can correct me when he shows up. He thought that probability made no sense. Either the particle was there, or it wasn't. He said probabilities were for games, not reality. We kicked this idea back and forth well into the 1930s. And at one point, here's what he said to me, and I quote, God doesn't play dice with the universe. God. So I told him, Einstein, don't tell God what to do. That sounds more like philosophy than physics. Well, perhaps so. It cannot be resolved by experiments. But since we've been talking about the 1930s, tell me what you did in World War II. Well, when the war started, I was teaching physics at the University of Copenhagen, and they left me alone. But in 1943, I got word that the Nazis were going to come for me because of my Jewish mother. So I had to get out of Denmark. The Danish resistance helped us escape to Sweden, 
And once there, I appealed to King Gustav, and he provided asylum to 7,000 Danish Jews. Wow, that was great. That was just the beginning. It gets more curious. My British friends heard about my escape, and so they sent a speedy mosquito bomber to Sweden for me. The flight didn't go exactly as planned because the helmet and oxygen mask were too small for my larger head. Fortunately, the entire three-hour flight wasn't at all at high altitude, so when we finally landed in Britain, and I came to, they asked me how I felt. I feel fine. Slept like a baby. <laughs> Maybe that was the good football training. <laughs> uh, possibly. The British had made amazing progress on a nuclear bomb, and soon I was whisked to the United States where I saw Einstein briefly and then quickly flew to Los Alamos, New Mexico. So you got involved in the Manhattan Project. <laughs> well, my involvement was enough to have a code name called Nicholas Baker. But nope, they didn't need my help. And besides, I favored sharing information with the Soviets to speed up the process. The politicians weren't buying any of that. And at a high level meeting, President Roosevelt and Prime Minister Churchill discussed me. They said that mm, steps have to be taken to ensure that he is responsible for no leakage of information, particularly to the Russians. Me. Nicholas Baker, a spy. Whew, after all I'd been through. <laughs> Even if you had wanted to spy, the Russians already had one in place. His name was Klaus Fuchs. Well, I'm no nationalist. I suggested that the United Nations institute the International Atomic Energy Agency to monitor development of nuclear weapons. Yes, and you were recognized for your efforts by being awarded the first ever Adams for Peace Award. It was well deserved. Danke. Thank you. Um, you know, uh, I know Einstein said time is relative, but this is ridiculous. Maybe this is connected to our contract dispute with the minions. Uh, I thought they were more professional than this. <laughs> What's that? Something about only one scientist at a time or else? Oh, uh, I guess that's my cue to exit. Bye and thanks. So wait, 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 don't go, don't go. Something just arrived on my foot. Uh-oh. Do you want to see what it is? Of course. Look, a bag. Oh. Let us see what's in the bag. I think so it says E bag. equals MC squared. Oh my goodness. Huh? It must be a message. Einstein's arrived! Einstein! He came! Well, that's wonderful! He's in a little box, but he's here. It's better than nothing. Uh, did the minions do, uh, bring this? I, I don't know. Well, it just a, arrived. And there's a message inside. There it's, it is. There's Einstein. Late, but not lost. Then what does he do? What does he do? He's a solar paneled. Einstein. Solar. He's solar. That, now that's physics for you. Right. Oh, and, so it is. And as he warms up, he should be waving his hand <laughs> with the power well, of the solar power. the power of light. Let's, right. let's give him that opportunity. Okay. okay. And, oh, look, um, here's something written. Should we see what they said? Yes. Here's, here's to you, Professor Art Wiggins, King of the Minions. You've given, you've given much info about physics. And that's, that's our, our opinion. opinion. Oh, no. Each program was factual and presented tongue in cheek. With hopes that your audience, more knowledge, they will seek. Oh. It's been, it's been our, our pleasure to work, work with you on the set, set sharing, sharing facts, facts about physics that, that your viewers won't, won't soon forget. forget. In honor of your hard work and hours of dedication, we present you with your personal hero of scientific information. A solar-powered Einstein to remind you of what you've done for, for the thousands, thousands of people, people for, for whom, whom you've made learning, learning so much fun. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, thank you so much. Gee whiz. It's so nice you've done this because I'm so worried about the minions. The minions have such difficulty and uh, they're saying something else. Um, 
I heard something about only one scientist at a time, um, or else. What do you mean by or else? I'm not getting that part of it. Um, you're not talking about the doomsday cancellation switcheroo, are you? Oh, please. Uh, what's happening here? I'm feeling weird. Hmm. Uh, this looks like the Art of Physics show. Um, what was that? Uh, well, as usual, I don't quite know what those minion guys are saying, uh, but I see some delightful people sitting across from me. You look familiar, but I can't quite place you. Um, or maybe your guests on the Art of Physics show. Mm. Usually Art Wiggins interviews guests, um, but he doesn't appear to be here. So um, maybe there's something in his notes. Ah, these are rough notes. Uh, yes. Oh! Here, it says something about David and Shelley. Are you David and Shelley? We are. We, we are. I'm oh, Shelley. that is right. And you must be David then. I am. Wonderful. And you're Professor Einstein. I am. It's so that nice to meet you. Why, it all works. Isn't that nice? <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Uh, I think I recognize you anyway from the closing credits. Hmm. You are the guys that supply the voices so that you bring back to life all those old geezers from the Scientist Protection Program. I see. That's our job. That's a, that's a valuable service that you perform. You keep us alive in people's memories. I want to thank you for your efforts. I think it's wonderful that you do that. Um, well, Professor but, Wiggins had a lot to do with that. Oh, really? Well. How in the world did you ever get hooked up with that guy anyway? It's kind of a weirdo. <laughs> well, we went on a bicycle ride, and there he was. With his well, wife? He was with his wife, and he was on this strange tandem bicycle and oh. uh, we cycled along and uh, we got to know him through that. And then there was the bridge hmm. because he plays bridge very well as does his wife. Did you mean like a bridge over troubled waters? Uh, it was when the cards weren't right. Oh, uh, I was We're talking that. about the bridge game one plays with cards. Okay. And then of course we had to eat so we would eat dinner with him occasionally. Eat? And oh, what a good was, idea. Yeah. And, and this Wiggins guy is a really good cook, although, you know, he doesn't eat any meat. Right. Mm. Mm. And, and lactose intolerant, He's very too. healthy. Right. Well, you know, um, they call it vegan in uh, the Scientist Protection Program, but there's another um, a translation that, you know, you know what else vegan means to some of the scientists? No. no. A poor hunter. Oh. No. <laughs> Can't catch okay. any animals. That would be good. Right. Yeah, and then we became involved in something called Secret Cinema, which happens at the Maple Theater mm. in Michigan. And, and, and we look at the old movies. Old movies. We review old movies. Oh, that's films. why you like the old geezers in the Scientist that's Protection right. Program. That's right. Absolutely. The good old days. Oh, the good old days. Oh, my. Yeah. That's amazing. You guys sound awfully busy. Um, but do you have other hobbies that you follow? Well, apart from the bridge, the biking, diving, sailing. Diving? Oh, that's right. You guys dive? Yes. yes. We love scuba diving. It's another world under there. Wow. Yeah. Is there physics under underwater, do you think? Oh, I bet There's there is. A lot, a lot of, of physics. Of it. <laughs> In fact, how we keep up is uh, amazing for me. Oh, yeah. right. There's buoyancy. buoyancy. Absolutely. It's all right, physical right. properties. Last year, that Wiggins guy had some people on it that, uh, that did that. Right. The, right. They were buoyant, I guess, and mm -hmm. they floated away. It was wonderful. <laughs> well, we hope not to do that when we scuba dive, but we love to travel and read and meet new people. Uh huh. And oh, uh, you like to travel? Oh yes, yeah. Oh, that's good. So yeah. I guess that's why. Now, have you ever traveled to the Scientist Protection Program? No, um, vicariously. I think you uh, can't quite get in there until um, after your physical until presence on this earth is finished. Oh, well, you could be right, although I seem to be back here now, so. I know, it's a miracle. Perhaps There's so. Mi maybe minion power. Minion, I wondered about that. Um, did I hear more minion sounds? You know, I see these minions all the time. Um, I even know some of their names. There's uh, Stuart and Bob and Kevin. I know them pretty well, actually. Um, but I have the hardest time understanding what in the world they're saying. Um, did either of you get that last thing that they said? Nope. No. No. Nope. We're not very good at minionese. Mm. Well, me neither, but um, 
there's, wait, wait a minute, there's something that has, speaking of mignonese, there's something that has appeared on the back oh. of the bookcase here. Can you see this? Lots of minions. It's a minion bag. It here appears to be a minion bag. Um, but then, of course, if it's a bag, then there's probably stuff in there. Let's see what it is. Oh. Oh. Well, there's some minions. I think Surprise. it is minions. Uh, and in fact, it's that's Stuart. Can you see Stuart? And here's Bob. Bob needs to go on a diet, I think, a little bit. <laughs> Um, Kevin's too tall, but nevertheless, there are those three guys. And then they have a bunch of, oh, now I'm beginning to understand it. Here's Minion Improbable, and he's hanging right out with all these other guys. Huh? So I guess the Minions like to hang together. Um, so They do like to dress alike. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what in the world is the meaning of all this, do you think? I don't know, but what, what are these? These oh. are fortune cookies. Maybe. Well, look, there's one for each of us, actually. Oh, are we hey. fortunate? Maybe. Shall, we, shall we find out? Yeah. Should we open them? Maybe there's see. a clue in this. Hmm. It says. Yep. Ah. Got it. So, Shelly, what does yours say? <laughs> oh, cheaters. I have to put my cheaters on. <sighs> oh. Okay, it says you a laugh a minion a minute. Laugh oh, a minion. Laugh oh. a minion. Yeah, that's what it says. That's <laughs> lovely. How about yours, David? Mine says your lucky number is forty-four. Forty-four. Yeah. Isn't there, wasn't there a Colt? No, it was Colt forty-five, wasn't it? <laughs> I guess it's when you got it at a discount store that was Colt forty-four. Forty-four. Yeah. yeah. And it says your minions will inspire others. <laughs> Mine says, what in the world does this mean anyway? It says, tag, you're it. Wave the mask. What mask? What mask? Oh, Up. oh what is this? There's a mask. What is that one? That appears to be a mask. And it says, our old friend, Art it, Wiggins. But it says, wave the mask, and now you're it. So I'm supposed to be, uh-oh, I think I understand what it means. You're going to turn into Art Wigan. <sighs> or he's going to become Einstein. Mm. <laughs> well, thank you viewers for watching and uh, thank you for being on this program. I hope you've enjoyed this show. Until next time, if there is one, I'm the new Art Wiggins. <laughs>